uh, how would you describe your relationship with President Kenyatta? I want to tell you without mincing words that I'm supporting Uhuru Kenyatta's agenda 101%. In fact, I'm supporting him together with Baba with all my body parts and organs. There was a time that people misconstrued that we were enemies, we were fighting. Yes, during that period, it was a, it was a time where there was war. And when there is war, you don't expect to laugh with your opponent or your enemy. During that time, we had our political differences, but it wasn't personal. During that time, I had to defend my master, who is Baba, through thick and thin. And now there is peace. Now Baba and President Uhuru are working together. Now I'm supporting the duo with all my body parts and they organs. The dynamic duo. They? they are now called the dynamic duo. The two, I'm yeah. supporting them unreservedly. Without being fickle, without being frivolous, without being irresolute, I will support them. And I'm supporting okay. them. How about his deputy, William Ruto? You can only serve one master at a time. And I'm serving, I'm serving my master who is Baba. And Ruto is not my master. I can never serve him. I will never serve him. I'm not a frivolous person. I'm not a fickle person. I'm not an irresolute person. That is why I'm telling you that I will serve Baba with all my body parts and organs. Baba is my leader. Baba has done a lot for me. Baba has made me a member of parliament. When I was at the University of Nairobi, Baba was my friend. Baba is my father. Baba gives me an, a family advice, a fatherly advice. Baba treats me like his own son. Therefore, I will never and I'm telling you this and I'm pointing heaven. I will never ever support Ruto. Never ever support Ruto. I can only support Baba and I will ever and forever support Baba. That is my leader. And I love him so much. So what makes you a firm believer of his leadership, of Baba's leadership? You know this notion where, our, where Ruto is saying that he's a hustler. Baba is more of a hustler than Ruto. Let me tell you, whatever Baba has done in this nation and for this nation wears a heart. Baba has been arrested and detained for the sake of Kenyans in this nation. Baba fought for the multi-party in 92 in this nation. Baba has gone to Kamiti. Ruto has never gone to Kamiti. Baba has gone to Manyani. Ruto has never gone to Manyani. Baba has gone to Industoleria prison. Ruto has never gone to Industoleria prison. Baba has gone to Shimolatewa prison. Ruto has never gone to Shimolatewa prison. And Baba went there because of the interest of Kenyans. Baba fought for multi-party multi -party system in 1992. Ruto never fought for the same. Ruto was supporting Moi, who was a dynasty. Then, Ruto is a product of a dynasty. Baba is not a product of a dynasty. Baba fought his way through and through by himself. And Baba has even brought up Ruto. Ruto was in ODM. Yeah. Ruto was Baba's child. Ruto supported a dynasty in Moi. Ruto supported Kibaki, a president. Ruto supported our beloved president, Uru Muigai Kenyatta. So Ruto has been there at the G-spot of the so-called dynasty. He has been at the G-spot of the dynasty. Baba has always fought his way up. Baba's uh, father was the vice president of this country. The first vice president to have resigned because he didn't want atrocities which was committed by the then government. He resigned. Baba never rode on that. Baba is the only politician who resigned from Ford Kenya and contested in his own party and won elections at Kibra constituency, a, a Langata constituency, the then Langata constituency. Now, Baba has shelved his personal ambitions for the interest of Kenyans. In 2007, Baba decided to leave the presidency for Kibaki and opted for a prime minister position. Why? For the interest of Kenyans, so that there could be peace, so that Kenyans could go to job, so that people could go to, for education, so that economy of this nation could grow. Were it uh, 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 for war, then this economy would have crumbled by now. But Baba shelved his ambition. Baba shelved his ambition in 2013 and said, all this is vanity. Vanity is vanity. And he left it and said, I want to make sure that this country is peaceful. 
In 2017, you saw what happened. But Baba shared his ambition and said the country is bigger than himself. The country is bigger than, any, an, than an individual. So this man called Baba has really done a lot for this nation. Shelving his ambition for the sake of Kenyans. Sacrificing for the sake of Kenyans. This new constitution, 2010, is being enjoyed. Why? Because of Baba. The devolution that is in various counties, the devolution that is being practiced, is because of Baba. The rights that are being uh, protected is because of Baba. And now we are going for BBI to change the constitution because of Baba. Now what else do we need, honestly? What can we ask for? You get somebody somewhere at the corner saying, oh, Baba is not good. What has Baba done to you? Is your father good to you? Somebody is saying that, oh, Baba did not uh, help, what, what, what. If your father has not helped you, why do you expect Baba to help you? Mm -hmm. Baba is also somebody's father. For me, I want to say that Baba is more of a hustler than Ruto. Ruto has never experienced hardship. You cannot say that you sold chicken and at the same time at the age of 20, you were given a car. Ruto's first car, he said that he bought his first car when Moi gave him money. Mm -hmm. Now, he may want the first youth to get a mkokoteni. We want the first youth to get a wheelbarrow. Are we stupid? Yeah. We cannot go to, edu uh, uh, to our schools. We cannot get educated. We cannot go to schools. Basically, to come and kuja kuendesha mkokoteni. Iyo ni upuzi. Where is this? Uh, my friend, wacha ni kulize. <laughs> Wewe ni graduant. Wewe unaletewa wheelbarrow. Mm. So, that education is being multiplied by zero and raised to power infinity. Wacha ruta wacha upuzi yake buwana. Kuna mambo ati, ati hasla mkokoteni, hasla wheelbarrow, you are given your first car. Give the watu magari to uko serious. A section of the youth says... And, and he should not even give watu hizo ma wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow naenda kubebea nini hapo sayo? Niambie ndugu yangu. The youth says that uh, it is better the one who gives you a wheelbarrow or that mkokoteni than vitenda wheel. They are saying baba has vitenda wheel. My friend... Which bit and a willy, and we have a constitution that gave birth to devolution that is providing employment opportunity in different counties. Which kit and a willy is that? Which kit and a willy led to the construction, development of infrastructure in this nation in 2007 when Baba was a prime minister? Which kit and a willy is that? But kit and a willy is telling Kenyans that we will build 20 stadiums and you don't build even one. Kit and a willy is telling a graduate that I'm giving you a wheelbarrow to do what with that wheelbarrow. Kitendawili is telling a youth in the slums who's already lost hope that youth would want to die, but that youth lacks money to even buy a rope to hang himself. Telling that youth that you can only be a mkokoteni driver, you can only pull handcart. That is Kitendawili. So between Baba and Ruto, who is a man of Kitendawili? So my friend Bwana, watch out to see Jose Baba Bwana, you only pussy mingi. Okay, I understand that uh, you, you, from what you have said, you are a firm believer of BBI and you support it fully. What is that one thing you can't wait to be implemented? In the BBI, the reason why I will support and uh, the, this BBI is because of one thing. It fights for inclusivity. My brother, Wiki, we are tired. We are tired of killing each other after elections. We are tired, mm. sick and tired of destroying properties. Sick and tired of branding you a Luo. Sick and tired of branding you a Kikuyu. Sick and tired of branding you a Luya or a Kamba or a Kisi or a Giriyama. We want an inclusive system where everybody will be represented. Leadership is about representation. Where everybody will be represented. Where after elections things run as normal. Where we only take a day to do our elections and the following day results are announced and life continues as usual. We don't want a system where politicians will be using, misusing and abusing the rights of the youths. Using them during violence. Misusing them to put for them their posters. Abusing them in any political activity. But when the cake is on the table, they are put on the side. We want a system where everybody will be included. That inclusivity, that idea of not killing my neighbor, that idea of embracing fellow Kenyans yeah. is what we need. We need a Kenya where when there's a problem, is treated as a problem. is not treated as a tribal problem. Okay? Yeah. Where they, when there's a problem, that problem 
does not discriminate whether you are a Luo, you are a Kikuyu, or you are a Kalenjin. But that problem should be a source of unity to Kenyans. I rest my case. There's this notion that uh, with BBI, the, the, the executive will be expanded. Don't you think that will overburden Wanjiku? Let me be honest with you. It is not about overburdening Wanjiku because in the BBI, number one, we are doing away with certain positions, certain nomination positions. And we are only introducing prime minister and two deputies. Those are only three positions. The ministers, the cabinet secretaries, will be appointed from parliament. That is not reducing or increasing. It is reducing the wage bill. Because that MP will be a minister, will earn as a member of parliament and only serve ministerial duties as a minister. But now we have ministers separate, we have MPs separate. So that is higher wage bill. It is even higher than even this other one. What, what, what will a prime minister earn and two deputies? So it is just a propaganda to doing people. But what is the bigger picture? The bigger picture is that we create these institutions for the sake of Kenyans, for the sake of uniting Kenyans. The unity of Kenyans is more important than any other thing in this nation. But nowadays we know that the blood of ethnicity is thicker than the unity of Kenyans. But we want the unity of Kenyans to be thicker than the blood of ethnicity. Yeah. Uh, Maraga, Chief Justice David Maraga, wants to send you and your colleagues home because of their failure to enact laws key in the implementation of the two-thirds gender rule. There are lawmakers supporting this. What is your position as Babu Wino? Me, I will not support. I know today if I go for elections, I will be elected unopposed. In fact, there will be no single person who will vie against me. Let me be honest with you. Why? Because of the good job that I've done to the great people of Mbakasi's constituency. But I will not support because when that Mbakasi's resident woke up in August to vote for me as a member of parliament, the contract was for five years. If they were given a contract for three years or two years or one year, they would have made a different choice probably. But because they knew that we wanted to give Babu a contract for five years, that's why they lined up and elected me. Therefore, I will obey the voice of the people because the voice of the people is the voice of God. There are so many young people out there. And, and in addition to that, how sure are you that after dissolution of this parliament, there will be a, an election in the next 90 days if the parliament is dissolved? There has to be by elections. Yeah. How sure are you that that next by election we are going to observe that uh, uh, two-third gender rule. How sure are you? Because the sovereignty lies with the people. It is the people who elect the leaders. So the moment you want to say that, uh, that we dissolve, we go for by election, will people still elect? Will they observe that two-third gender rule? It won't. So the moment it will not be observed, will we also dissolve that next parliament? So we will be having a dissolving country every other time. So I don't think if it is watertight to justify any conviction about the dissolution. Okay. Uh, as we finish this, there are young people out there who look up to uh, Honorable Paul Mungili as Babu Wino. Yes. What would you like to tell them? Number one, to the youth and the women and the elderly in this nation. Number one thing, Seek ye unto the kingdom of God, and every other thing will be added unto you. Seek ye God first. Then have faith. Then follow it with action. I believe that we can all make it. If I made it, there is no difference between me and you. If I became a member of parliament, you can become a member of parliament as a fellow youth. If I became a student leader, you can become a student leader. If I became somebody in this nation, you can become a CEO in this nation. You can create jobs in this nation. You can be employed in this nation. You can change lives in this nation. Don't lose hope. Let us work together. I'm always there for you as a youth, for the women. I'm there for you. Let us unite. Let us work for the betterment of the lives of Kenyans. Thank you and God bless all of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable Baba Wino, for uh giving us this opportunity to to hear from you and next week we shall bring you another guest remember this is where news and opinion makers give their views and also we give you a chance to come here 
if you have an interesting story to tell to the world. Thank you so much. My name is Wycliffe Nyamasege. <laughs>